this next group, so AR has gained a lot of traction since Pokemon Go, and I think we bring this up every single time we're at this table. Uh, and I know, Nimit, how, how much time do you spend looking for, like, your car in a parking lot after you go shopping? All right, you don't need to answer that. No, we can I, all assume a lot. We can just actually assume. a lot, yeah. But yeah. are you talking about in Pokemon or just like in my real car? In real, like your real car. You have a Pokemon car? No, no, no I don't. <laughs> I, yeah, that's why I was confused because I'm like, is that no, a car no. full of Pokemon yeah. or is that okay? Uh, but yeah, yeah I, I think we can assume that it probably it takes you a while. And I'm it takes me way too long. Yeah, I usually have to hit the emergency sound. Yeah. So yeah, that, I mean, that's what a lot of people do, right? So next time though, you can maybe just drop some breadcrumbs on your way from leaving the car and find right. your way back in AR, and let's hear yep. them talk about it a little bit. Good afternoon, everyone. We are Breadcrumbs, and I'm Kevin Ho. This is Jesse Moskowitz, Shannon Yee, and Vanessa Jimenez. We're an augmented reality React Native iOS app inspired by the classic German fairy tale, Hansel and Gretel. Users can create or follow a trail of digital breadcrumbs rendered as 3D AR objects using your iPhone's camera. Breadcrumbs is a solution to many of today's problems, both big and small. Whether you're finding a lost loved one, finding your car, finding the right room on the first day of class, or even following a trail to your friend's hidden waterfall on their favorite hike. In its infancy, we knew that our project had to rely on a mobile environment because we really needed augmented reality and a camera. So to keep the, U to keep the UI flexible and clean, we took advantage of both stack and tab navigators within React Native for the layout. We leveraged Passport along with Express on the server side for authentication. As an extra web security measure, we use Node.js's uh, crypto module for encryption and implemented server side access control. After logging in as Kevin, the first thing he'll encounter is a menu of trails, which Jesse will go over now. We use Expo.io, Expo3, and 3.js to overlay an augmented universe onto your phone's current view, which manifests as the breadcrumbs trail. Whenever Kevin is looking at a trail of breadcrumbs, there's essentially two realities to what he's seeing. There's his phone's camera view, and then a secondary scene of orbs placed within that reality. Every time Kevin views a, a trail of breadcrumbs, an AR camera session is instantiated onto his phone. 3.js gave us the ability to render the 3D orbs onto the scene. This is imposed upon Expose 3's AR camera session and positioned along XYZ coordinates relative to his phone. As part of our agile development uh, process, test users gave us iterative feedback. For every trail created, we created reverse trails. This way users could go back to their origin. We achieved this functionality by calculating the vector differences of the XYZ coordinates. And now Shannon will talk about trail creation and some of the challenges we faced. To create a trail, Kevin can enter in an origin and destination. He can tap create, and once the camera's in view, he can start walking. And as he's walking, his relative location's being saved onto the local state in set intervals. The camera that you see here is uh, his phone's built-in camera working in conjunction with Expo 3's AR camera, along with XYZ world position, uh, which calculates the distance in meters since starting the trail. Once he navigates out of the screen, those coordinates are sent to the database and rendered on the home page as well as his own profile page. Our greatest technical challenge was trying to implement geolocation using latitude and longitude, but the readings weren't precise because your signals can bounce around depending on where you're standing, whereas relative location can be calculated more accurately using Expo 3. And now Vanessa will talk more about the back end and server side. For the back end, we opted for a lightweight schema design using Postgres as our DB and SQLize as our ORM, making it very efficient to create and retrieve information. To recap, here's an overview of the technologies we used during the creation of breadcrumbs. If you would like to try to use our app and leave breadcrumbs of your own, our front end is currently being deployed on expo.io and our back end on Heroku. Deploying the two separately helped keep our code clean and modular. If you would like to view our source code, you can view our code base on GitHub. Overall, it was a great experience working together as a team through the creation of this app. Thank you for your time, and we hope you are as excited about breadcrumbs as we are.
All right, vote for breadcrumbs. Like the post, like the pinned comment. That was awesome. It was like, I, I'm, I'm amazed how accurate the pinning of the 3D objects is to real-time space. That, Because, you know, in Pokemon Go, even you feel like there's some flex in where it is, right? But this one, it was like locked on hard. Um, yeah. I, I think it was because they, they really focused on like mapping within a particular geographical small location. And so like okay. it, wasn't, it wasn't necessarily uh, geo-mapped, which they gave a good reason for doing that kind of geospatial distances isn't as precise and i think that's sort of a nice product because when we all you know google maps is really good at getting us from like far point a to point b but as soon as we get close it's like i'm like spinning around i don't know where i am i don't know what direction yeah. i'm facing and this i think really uh, does a good job maybe that yeah. says more about me i guess but i think yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah very cool